Psalm 19. Uh, some will be blessed and some will have to work hard. We're going to be all over this book. <laughs> but you will, I hope, be blessed as I am. Uh, here tonight that we have three things you can be sure of. Three things. In Psalm 19... Uh, I want us to look at these three things tonight with a special interest. And Psalm 19 and verse number 7, just three verses here. And he said, The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul, and the testimony of the Lord is sure. And it says it's making the wise simple. Now, let, let me read 9 and 10. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgment of the Lord, judgments. Did you know there's only two? There's the great white throne judgment. Then there's the judgment seat of Christ where the Christians, where we will go in there and the rewards will be handed out. But I thank God that I will not stand in the second judgment. And just stay with us. All right. And he said, the judgments, that's an S on that, of the Lord are true and righteous all together. All right, so that means, that don't mean there's going to be a general judgment or a general resurrection. That is far from the truth. Verse 10, more to be desired are they than gold, yea, than much fine gold, sweeter also than honey and the honeycomb. Heavenly Father, bless the reading of the Word of God and help us, Lord, just for a few moments this evening. In Christ's name, amen. All right, as we begin to look, there are those, there are those that... Uh, these glasses are giving me a fit, so you just bear with me. He said, there are those that can be sure of one thing these days that others say we can be sure of only two things. Two things. But death and taxes are the two things that everybody say, well, that's, that's the only sure thing you can count on. I beg your pardon. I'm going to give you three. All right. And death and taxes, but I would like for you to consider three things. Three things that are and can and will be, you can be sure of that is coming. And the first one, you can be sure of the scriptures. You can be sure of them. And in verse 19 and verse number 7, here we find that, uh, that it simply says, the law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul, not the flesh. The flesh will never be saved and never can be. We are born in a sinful state, but it says here that the perfection and the righteousness of God is given and protecting the soul. You can be sure of that. 
And that is the breath, that is the inner man that God breathed into us where we take that at the moment of death. Now, brother, when I leave here, the Word of God says to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. We're leaving here. And we're going out of here. But he says, converting the soul and the testimony of the Lord is sure. The testimony of the Lord. These scriptures, it is sure. And Psalm 93 in verse number 5 uh, you don't have to turn if you just want to write down the, it, the testimonies of our sure. David said here, it is said in the Psalm of David that we can, and also in Mark, and, uh, but anyway, we can be sure that God says what he means, and he means what he says. And Jesus has said this all the way through the scriptures. But also tonight, as we begin to look at this thing and we look at it, heaven and now, the, it plainly says, heaven and earth shall pass away. Heaven and earth. And what he is saying here in Psalm 93 is, it, I just want to read it just a minute to get it, get exactly. I don't even have it. Uh, I just read over it this today, stayed in there. And as I begin to look at this thing, in Psalm 93, I believe it was in verse number five, and he said simply this, the testimonies, thy testimonies are very sure. Holiness becometh thine house, O Lord, forever. So God is holy, and the testimonies of God, and the testimonies, you think about it, of God's people down through the process of time. We've had people stand up, oh, give glory to God and praise God, amen, shout, and never see them again. They get their wagon loaded, and they've got enough to last them till Jesus comes, I guess. But the thing about it is, Brother James, it can't, it can't be that way. God said, forsake not the assembling of yourselves together. So the testimony of God and uh, is what is so real. And in John 12, 48, he simply says this, He that rejecteth me and receiveth not my words hath one that judgeth him. The word that I have spoken, the same shall judge him in the last day. Over, okay, now what he is saying here, the thing you can be sure of, there's a judgment. There's a judgment. You're going to stand there as well as I. And that's, that's a serious thing if you really get to thinking about it. You get to th just let your mind go to the judgment seat of Christ. And all of the Christians are coming in. All of the born-again saints of God and just boom, 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 God reaches down and pulls your name out of the hat. I'm just where we can all understand it. And he's saying, Dean, come up here. I don't know what a new name is. I don't know what the one, I know the one that I have now. And the thing about it is, Will that be the one at the judgment? But immediately after the judgment, I know our names are going to be changed. There's going to be a new name. Okay, but the thing about it is, all of your records are brought out. Oh, dear God, I'm going to hit the floor. I have omitted things that should have been done. 
I may be done things that I shouldn't have done. And all of these at the judgment seat of Christ. What he is saying simply here, and I just read to you in John 12, the 48, he says that he that rejecteth me receiveth not my words, but there's one that judgeth him. The word, the word I have spoken, the word and the scriptures, the scriptures, you can be sure of it. And not only that, as we go on just a little bit farther, therefore it, it we'd better listen to him and when he tells us in Luke, in Luke 8, 18, take heed therefore how you hear. Take heed how you hear. Well, I didn't understand it just exactly. I just don't believe it. I just don't believe it's going to be that. He said, take heed the way you hear. Take heed. And the thing is, we better take heed. Because, think about it. The testimony of God, the Word, the Scriptures, is going to judge you and I. Well, I heard it, but I, I just didn't see it that way, Lord. No, God said you're going to stand there without an excuse. In Numbers, in the book of Numbers tonight, and as we, I just want to read this again. You don't have to turn to these places. In Numbers, in chapter 32 and verse number 23, listen to what the Word of God tells us there. But if you will not do so, behold, ye have sinned against the Lord. Listen carefully. And be sure your sin will find you out. The old prophet of God in, well, that's the Old Testament preacher. No, that's the new as well. And that's his God spoken scriptures. Be sure your sin. The old prophet, he was telling them there, be sure. They, they didn't want to be numbered. They didn't want to be. They was part of them that wanted to stand up and argue. Well, scripture says, be sure your sin will find you out. Number two, you can be sure of sin. The first one, you can be sure of the scriptures. You can be sure of sin. There's sin all around you. There's the thing about it is in 2 Timothy, or 1 Timothy, in chapter 4. Chapter 4, and listen to what the Word of God says here. And it, it is, it's so real. It's so real that we can all take it to the bank. In chapter 4 and verse number 2, the Word of God tells us, He said, Speaking lies and in hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. Isn't that the way we are right now? Let me read verse 1. He said, Now the Spirit speaketh express, expressly that in the last times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Now listen to verse 2 again. Speaking lies in hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. We've got them all around us. They Well, if you'll come this way, if you'll go that way, if you'll do this, and the, the money is not the root of all evil, but the love of it. There's some rich people in the Word of God 
that served God and still and went to heaven, brother. Yes, you go back and you look at Abraham. Oh, you look at Solomon. It took me a long time to dig around through the Song of Solomon and Proverbs and Ecclesiastes to find out where God would give me peace. That Solomon went to glory, but he sure did. He was God's man. And God said there had never been a wiser man ever been born. But look what sin. You can be sure sin. Sin crept in. And Solomon was great. Solomon was a, uh, uh, he was, um, uh, he was martyred, so to speak. But, but the thing about it, he was a statue. He was a hero to the people, even though there's a lot of people didn't like him. And, but they gave heed to him. And he was the wisest man, God said, that ever lived. None wiser has ever been born outside of the Lord Jesus Christ. Be sure, sin, sin. And the thing about it is in Galatians, in Galatians chapter number three, listen to what it said. And uh, it, it tells us that uh, it's, it's just real. Chapter six, I mean, chapter six in verse number seven. And he says, be not deceived, God is not mocked, for whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that soweth to the flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption, but he that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. I want life everlasting, don't you? I don't want to sow to the, to, to the flesh. And not only that, but in Proverbs, Proverbs chapter 5 and verse number 22. Uh, now, I, I couldn't pass not being able to bring this up because when in the book of Proverbs, it is, it is so real that we need to understand this. But he says now in chapter number 5, in verse 22, he says, For the ways of man are before the eyes of the Lord. Now God is looking on, and we can be sure of sin. But he said the ways, the, he said, the, that's in verse 21. And he said, for the ways of a man are before the eyes of the Lord, and he pondereth all his goings. Now look in verse number 22. He says, for his own iniquities shall take the wicked, take the wicked himself, and he shall be holden with the cords of his sins. Be sure sin. It's, it's easy to go out and join in with the world, the flesh would, because they go out and they enjoy the things of this world. You know, it's kind of, sometimes you're so tired and you come home, you just can't already go, but you got to take a shower. You got to get ready. You got to come to church and look like a Christian. Amen. But the main thing is be one. Be one. I can, I could fool the world. But the eyes of God are on me. Think about it. Everywhere you go. Have you ever been to the garden in Gatlinburg where the, the bust or the, the, the little thing of Christ sitting out there in the garden? And I don't care where you go in that garden. His, that's right, Wilma. Them eyes are on you. What a beautiful garden. 
And I don't know who made that little statue or that little bust of Christ sitting there. But Lord, them eyes. I couldn't walk by it without tears coming down my cheek, folks. You think about God. That's just a piece of clay that somebody formed. And that's me. But that little monument there, that little stone structure or statue, someone with talented hands made that. But boy, it'll sure get you to thinking. Be sure your sins will find you out. People say, I'll go here or I'll go there to get away from everybody I know and have a good time. And nobody will ever know what I'm doing away from here. The eyes of God are right on you all the time. And I know Stephanie is smart and Delaney, but God's got a smarter secretary. His name is Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, and the Holy Spirit will gouge them conscience. Oh, he'll let you know. Oh, I'll tell you, he'll, he'll let you know. And your children are going to follow a lot of your attributes and the way you go. In Exodus, in the book of Exodus, we find these words. And as we, as we look back there, and find this scripture. I, I just, I, I don't know. I, I thought about this today and I read it and I read it and I said, well, I'm going to share it. I know you know it, but I think we stand in Exodus 34, verse number six and seven. And the Lord now, Moses had went upon the mountain, come back down and he got mad and broke the Ten Commandments. And God said, hey, hey, you little smart aleck, get right back up the mountain. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm paraphrasing. He didn't say that because he was God's man. But he said, hey, I'm going to send you right back up. And the same two tables, God wrote the same thing again in Exodus 20. You'll find these... Uh, Ten Commandments, these commandments of God. But uh, it said in verse 30, uh, chapter 34 in the book of Exodus in verse 6, And the Lord passed by before him, now Moses, and proclaimed the Lord, the Lord God, merciful and gracious, long-suffering and abundant in goodness and truth. Now listen, listen to verse number 7. He said, and keeping mercy for thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgressions. Here's the word again, sin. And that will by no means clear the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children, upon the children's children, unto the third and to the fourth generation. How far does your life focus and show a picture down the road in your family? How far? Read verse seven, 8. And Moses made haste and bowed his head toward the earth, and he worshiped. Boy, I'll tell you right now, God got a hold of Moses' heart. God got a hold of him. And he put it in the scriptures to show us what sin can do. Oh, the, they, they got mad and broke it. And they said, we don't want that. We're not, or Moses broke it through his temper tantrum. But God said, hey, you listen to me. Listen what sin can do. And you see it. 
the golden calf and all of that Aaron had led them. They had all made this thing and pierced ears and pierced nose and belly buttons and all of this ain't a new fad. They took all their earrings out and all of it, both men and women, they presented the gold and they made them a calf. They made sin. Oh, today they say this signifies this, this signifies that. Everybody is, they're into this tattoo thing now. Everywhere you look. But the thing about it is, it brings public shame. In, in Luke's gospel in chapter 12, verse 2 and 3, Luke's gospel, chapter 12, verse 2 and 3, listen to what it says. For there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed, neither hid that shall not be known. Therefore, whatsoever you have spoken in darkness, be care listen carefully to what I'm saying tonight. That tongue can work like a shovel and it can dig a hole deeper than you'll ever get out of. But it said, for there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed, nothing hid that shall not be known. Therefore, whatsoever you have spoken in darkness shall be heard in the light. And that which ye have spoken in the ear in closets shall be proclaimed upon the housetops. What's he saying? When the judgment seat of Christ, you've been saved. You know better. Read the book of Proverbs about tail bears. It's a sin. It's not like it used to be on hee haw. Listen to it and get it right because it's not gossip when you get it right the first time. You <laughs> see, that's, uh, that's where this sure thing comes in. God said if it's spoken in a closet, that's in red letters in my Bible. I believe if you got the right book, it'll be in yours. And the thing also, in the book of Hebrews 9.27, it is appointed unto man once to die, and after that, the judgment. Death is coming. Death is on the heels of every person. And in the book of the Revelation, and we're going to look at the third one here very briefly. In the book of Revelation in chapter number 14 to start with, and I, won't, I wasn't going to read that, but I'm going to. In chapter 14, the Word of God says here now, in Revelations in chapter 14 to start with, the thing is that hell is forever. Hell is forever. Chapter 14 and verse 11. Listen to what the Word says. He said, And I looked, and behold, a white cloud. And upon the cloud one set like unto the Son of Man, having on his head a golden crown, and his hand a sharp sickle. God's going to... He's going to have the final end. And look over in Revelation in chapter 20. And he says here in verse 14 and 15, Death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Hell is real. It's, the thing is, it's, you can't escape it. And I read it to you in Psalms, chapter 19 and verse number 7. I read it to you. Hell is real. There is a place called hell. And if 
a person really, I thank God, if he really wants to know the physical truth of it, ask the man, the rich man. Talk to him if you could, but we can't. We can't do that. The third thing you can be sure of, and wrapping it up, you can be sure of salvation. You can be sure of the Scriptures. You can be sure of sin. It's everywhere you look. But I thank God you can be sure of Jesus. You can be sure of Him because He is the real thing. In Second Peter, in Second Peter, in chapter 1 and verse 10, listen to what the Bible says. Wherefore, the rather brethren, given diligence to make your calling and election sure. For if you do these things, you shall never fall. What things is he talking about? He's talking about what it said over there in the book of Romans. In chapter 10 and verse number 13, the Word of God tells us we need to be saved. We need Christ. We need His love and we need His mercy because every, everywhere you turn, there is, there is a way out. In Romans 10, he said in verse 13, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Boy, you can take that to the bank. That is for real. You can be sure of salvation. Salvation is without the best thing you will ever know in this life is separation from the world to Christ. And God said, Whosoever will, let him come. And over in the book of Acts, in chapter number 16, I, re I read a few things today. And as you look into it, and I know you're familiar with the book of Acts in chapter 16. Paul and Silas, they in prison in stocks. But after it was all over in chapter 16 and verse number 31, you're going to find there this, the, uh, where they, they, the Philippian jailer, they seen who and what Christ could do in two men. And they simply, he came and he asked, what must I do? And Paul said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Just believe on Him. Salvation is sure. Salvation is the cheapest thing you'll ever get a hold of because it's free to whosoever will. Thank you for listening. Thank you for putting up with me tonight just a little while. But as I went through the Scriptures today and there's so many things you can't be sure of. But these three things you can be sure of. The Scriptures, you can be sure of them. Sin, you can be sure of it. And also salvation. Salvation is real. Let us stand. Heavenly Father, as we come to you tonight, Lord, I thank you for the Scriptures. I thank you, Lord God, that you saved us. And God, you gave us knowledge and wisdom to understand at least a portion. And Lord, you said, God, that if we just trust you, then Lord, you'd take care of us. So Lord, there's nothing positive here. 
except the scriptures, except sin. And Lord, thank you for salvation. Lord, it's all here. And it's bound up in a book of love, a book of mercy, a book of grace, and prayer through faith. Oh, faithful prayer will unlock the doors of heaven. All oh, the ears of glory. God, we thank you. And Lord, I pray, dear God, forgive us of anything that would stand between me and you. Anything, Lord God, that would hinder, the, hinder me from living the Scriptures. Anything that would help this church, God, I pray that you would not let bad come with all of this good. God, I thank you. Now go home with us. Watch over us, Lord Jesus, and keep us. And God, we just simply pray for Brother Michael, Sister Donna, Lord, all of these at in need of prayer. And Lord, I stand in need of it all the time. Lord, these many requests, in Christ's name, amen. God bless you.